If I had used good judgment, I wouldn't have taken this job in the first place. But now that I've come this far, I'm willing to go on just to see what else will happen. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Interrupting a very important game. Uh, you play cards all by yourself? I play solitaire all by myself. Oh, solitaire. Uh, is game of luck? Ah, is game of luck that becomes game of skill in the proper hands, hey boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I bet you uh, can't beat it. Uh, who, may I ask, are you? Well, I'm the fellow who's the Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen please, please. One at a time. Now, if you're determined to interrupt my game, let's do it with as little fuss as possible. Now, hey, boy. Lisa, uh, this gentleman come to desk, Mr. Paladin. Ask if I know who you are. I'll bring him here to you. I see. And you, sir? Uh, me, uh, well, my name is Howard, Mr. Paladin. Jamie Howard. I would, uh, uh, say, why don't you... You ought to play that black seven on that red eight you got there. <laughs> well, this particular game has been temporarily suspended, Mr. Howard. At least until I find out just what your business might be. My business? Well, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you mean, why do I want to see you? That's what I mean. Well, sir, it is about my gold mine. I lost it. Yeah, I, I heard about you, and I figured maybe you're the man to help me get it back. You have lost a gold mine? Well, not exactly. I know where it is, all right. I say, I know where it is, but when I begin to hit pay dirt... A feller swindled me out of it and had me run off my claim. I see. And just where is this gold mine? Up back of Columbia, near a place called Yankee Hill. Columbia? Why, those mines were worked out years ago. Oh, give me five to one, they weren't. Not all of them. <laughs> no, sir. Here, take a look at this. Ah, that's, that's gold, all right. Mm, bet your life it is. That's why they stole her. I snuck back and took these out of the mine after. It figured maybe you wouldn't believe me. Oh, I can pay you all right. I can play you plenty once I get my mind back. I see. Mr. Howard, I think you have just made a deal. Well, good. I'm thankful that you're willing to help. Well, hey, boy, what do you think? Oh, Mr. Paladin, why don't you play Black Seven on Red Eight like Mr. Howard say? Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently. Overnight. We got an early start the next morning. Early, but not altogether bright. At least not for grizzled old Mr. Howard. He looked like he'd spent the night taking in the sights of San Francisco. I had seen his type before. Prospectors in from the hills looking strangely out of place among the gas lights and horse cars of a modern city. We had a long ride ahead of us, and I saw to it we covered as much ground as possible. Howard didn't have much to say until about noon when we pulled up alongside a little stream to let our horses drink. 
Oh, my doggy. I'm right glad to rest a spell, Paladin. Uh, the horses are, too, Mr. Howard. If we're going to reach Columbia, we can't run them into the ground. No. I... Hey, you hear that? Oh, uh, hear what? Hey, that bird. <laughs> I'll give you three to one. That's a Papa Robin bringing some food home for the young'un. You will, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you want to bet? Nope. Mm. You better save your gold, Mr. Howard. You might need it. Yeah. Uh, say, I, uh, say, I, I meant to talk to you about that. About what, Mr. Howard? Well, about that gold. Uh, see, I, I don't have it anymore. You, you don't have it? Hmm. Well, Mr. Howard, there must have been close to $700 worth of gold in that pouch you showed me last night. How could you have gone through that in one evening? Well, sure, now, I'll tell you. I say, I'll tell you. I, I met this feller, and we got to talking about poker. You know, he decided to play a little, and you know, the first thing I knew, he had it, and I didn't. Mr. Howard, I ought to turn around right now. No, I'm... no, 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 don't you worry, none. Don't worry. There's plenty more where that come from. As <laughs> soon as you get my mind back for me, we'll be rich, both of us. But just how much ore do you think there is in your mind? Well, it's hard to say, but should take out six, seven hundred thousand worth, easy. Hey, I bet you. <laughs> Mr. Howard, you're quite a betting man, aren't you? Well, sure. <laughs> Does a fellow good to do a little gambling now and then. Makes life interesting. Say, it makes it interesting. That's how I found all them other ones. Taking a gamble where others wouldn't. Uh, that's how you found all the other what? Why, all the other mine. Why, son, I've been through four or five fortunes for this one. But, <laughs> well, I'm getting older now, and that's why I'm hanging on to this one. Yeah. Well, we better move on. Come on, boy. Hey, come on. Hey. Mr. Howard, how long has it been since the country around Columbia saw its last big boom? Oh, about 10, 12 years, I guess. Of course, there's still a few of us around. Figured that there was still a strike to be made, and I proved it. <laughs> well, then tell me, isn't there still a sheriff in Columbia? Oh, why, sure there is. Farrell's his name. What did he say when you told him about being forced off your claim? When I told him? Yeah. Sure, I didn't have to tell him. He already knew. He did? Oh, I sure. He was the one that run me off. He was the... Oh. Yep. Oh, boy. Uh, Mr. Howard, did you say the sheriff ran you off your claim? Well, now, now, uh, wait a minute now, Pally. I say, wait just a minute. I guess I should have told you. Sheriff Farrell, he is in cahoots with the other one. <laughs> What other one? Why, the other Farrell, the one that runs the miner's friend's saloon up there. You couple of dirty, black-hearted scoundrels. And they're related? Well, sure. Sheriff's a brother to the other. Uh, well, all right, Mr. Howard. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm willing to go through with this just to see what happens. Oh, thanks, Paladin. <laughs> I, it's uh, just one other thing. Oh. Oh, something more you haven't told me, hmm? Well, it's just that I've been thinking about this Mr. Howard business. Would you would you mind just calling me Jamie? Everybody else <laughs> does. Okay. Jamie. It's a deal. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I don't know, Paladin. Might be we shouldn't have rode right into town like this. Right down the main street and all. You just let me worry about that, Jamie. Yeah, but suppose somebody see this. Jamie, I want them to see us. All right, you two. Yeah, yeah what, what'd I tell you, what'd I tell you? That's the sheriff. Oh. Yeah, just get them hands up and turn around, slow and easy. Drop your gun belt right where you be. Now, just a minute. Is this the way you welcome a visitor to town? Visitor? I don't consider no partner of Jamie's a visitor. You better do as I say. All right. That's good. Now, Jamie, I told you once, get them hands up. Sheriff, why are you doing this? From what I hear, you've already run him off his claim. Isn't that enough? Yeah, that was then. Now I'm arresting a pair of horse thieves. Horse thieves? Eh, eh, well, now, eh, that there was another little thing I guess I should have told you, Paladin. This here horse... Eh, it belongs to the sheriff. But, Jamie, why would you steal the sheriff's horse? Why? <laughs> well, everybody knows it's the best one in town. If I'd have taken any other horse, they'd have caught me before I got five miles away. Ah, uh, that's enough talk. You just start walking. I'm taking you to jail. Both of you. So long. Have a nice trip. Don't forget to phone. 
Wherever you go this summer, go first by long distance. Excuse me, can you tell me where the Conleys live? Yes, in the White House at the end of the block, on the right. But I'm not sure they're home. Oh, we called them long distance. They're expecting us. Thank you. A long distance call to friends you plan to visit this summer makes good sense. It will save you driving miles and miles, then finding no one at home. Call ahead to make sure of reservations, too. Wherever you go, go first by long distance. Rates are low. Why not call now? Oh, Shaw. I'm, I'm sorry about all this, Mr. Paladin. You should be, Jamie. Yeah, but I'm not worried none. No siree. You're not. No. I fig I say I figure you for a man that can get us out of here pronto. <laughs> yeah, well. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Well, anything I can do to help, just let me know. No, I think you've done just about enough, Jamie. Well, it isn't like I really stole the sheriff's horse, you know. I brung her back, didn't I? He's got her tied up in the stable out and back right now, ain't he? Yeah, you may have a point there, Jamie. Sheriff! Hey! Sheriff! Come here! Sheriff! All right! All right, All right stop that noise. Have you know I run a peaceable jail. Sheriff, I think maybe we can make a deal. The only deal you'll be making is with a rope. After a fair trial, of course. Horse thievery is a hanging offense. Now, listen, listen to me for a minute. In a way, you're responsible for all this. Did you or did you not run Jamie off his claim? Well, sure I did. It was my legal duty. That's what I'm paid to do as sheriff. But that didn't give him no right to take up horse no, stealing. No, wait a minute. You have your horse back, don't you? Sure, after I caught the thief. But you didn't catch him. Jamie brought the horse back of his own accord. Well... That meant that you were without the use of your horse for five, six days, right? Five days. Now, ten dollars a day seems like a fair rental. Supposing you had rented your horse to Jamie. But I didn't. He stole uh, her from right in front of the jail. I said supposing. Now, five days at ten dollars a day is fifty dollars. Now, if Jamie paid you that and threw in an extra ten, wouldn't you be, well, willing to call it square? Oh, well, now, th th that might put a different picture on it. It'd cost $10 to ask someone to build a gallows, anyhow. Jamie. Eh? Pay the sheriff his $60. Pay? Oh, well, Paladin, I, I ain't got $60. Like I told you, I lost my gold in San Francisco, but once I get my mind back... Of course, I guess I could use you prisoners to build the gallows yourself. Well, hold it. Hold it, Sheriff. Huh? I've got $60. It's in my saddlebag. Say, this is a mighty nice room. Oh, oh, I didn't know this hotel was so nice. All right now, Jamie. Before we go any further, I want you to know something. I've got $60 invested in you. If it weren't for that, I'd turn around and walk out that door right now. Oh, don't you worry about that, Paladin. You'll get your money back. Yeah, and plenty more, once I get my mind back. <laughs> Listen, Jamie, just what is the true story? The sheriff said it wasn't yours. Oh, it, it's them ferals. I say, it's them ferals. They're all alike. The sheriff and the other one that runs the saloon with them crooked games. What crooked games? Why, them card games with the crooked dealing. Oh, I've seen that dealer slipping cards off the bottom of the deck. I know. Yeah, and then, then when they found out from the man at the essay office just how rich my strike really was... That's how they... you lost your mind? In a crooked card game? That is how I had it stolen. But... They, they made me sign it over to them. And then the sheriff come around and run me off. Yeah, that's why I come for you, to get it back for me. But, Jamie, if you knew the card game was crooked, why did you get in it? Why did I get in it? Well, now, that is a silly question. Because there ain't no other place around here to gamble. That's why. Somehow I had to get away from Jamie Howard. I went downstairs and started to walk up Main Street, and then I noticed across the street the Miner's Friend Saloon, F. Farrell, proprietor. I decided to talk to Mr. Farrell about those card games of his. Well, hello there. I haven't seen you around here before. No, I'm afraid you haven't. Well, let's make up for lost time. How about a drink? Later, maybe. I'm here on business. Oh, well, maybe I can help you. 
You can. If you just tell me where I can find Mr. Farrell. Mr. Farrell? Well, the man who runs this place. The man whose name is on the sign out front. <laughs> and just what is so funny? There isn't any Mr. Farrell here. I'm the owner of this place, and my name's Floss Farrell. Oh. Now, you wanted to talk business? Uh, yes, yes, I did. My name is Paladin, Miss Farrell. So? I'm here to represent Jamie Howard. Hmm. Well, Jamie, I haven't seen him around for a while. He's been living kind of high since he struck it rich, hasn't he? But that's all over now, isn't it? Just what do you mean? I mean, he's no longer living so high since you took his mind from him in your card game here. Oh, not me, mister. I don't run any game. I lease the gambling concession to Bill Hargerty. Uh huh. Where would I find him? Back at the poker table. He's the fella dealing, the big fella. <laughs> And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie, where have you been? Well, it's a long story, Bergen. Remember, you said you wanted a car lubricated. I said I wanted a Guardian maintenance lubrication. Like all Chevrolet's Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, and Chevy and GMC trucks, our car deserves the best of service. And that means Guardian maintenance at our dealer service department. Yes, well, I drove our car to our dealers without an accident. Oh, most of the way. Charlie, where's the car now? It's on Main Street between 4th and 5th. Is it closer to 4th or 5th? It's all the way from 4th to 5th. All right, young man, you're going to get it now. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Bergen. It's just a scratch fender. Our dealer's GM trained mechanics have already got it looking like new again. It's part of their quality appearance service. Shall I still meet you in the woodshed? <laughs> you drove the car without permission. It's the woodshed. And I'll see you there as soon as I phone the dealer. Well, take your time. If you're not there in 10 minutes, I'll start without you. <laughs> I took a seat in the poker game Bill Hargerty was dealing and watched him work. He didn't look like the typical card sharp. He was big enough to scare most men by his size alone. And the livid scar along his left cheek didn't do anything to gentle his appearance. But he didn't need all that. He had a gambler's hands. And the cards came out of the deck for him like they were trained. Off the top, and off the bottom, too. Well, that's too bad, boys. Seems as though luck just isn't running your way tonight. Deal you in again, Mr. Paladin? Yes, Mr. Hargitay, if you don't mind. I have a hunch my luck may change this hand. <laughs> well, that's the way to think, all right. Oh? All right. Yes, sir. There you are. All right. I think I'll just open for 50. 50, huh? Well, I'll match that and raise you a hundred. Ooh, I'm out. That's too rich for me. Me too. How about it, Paladin? You still in? Still in, Mr. Hargitay. Cards? No, no. I think I'll have just as much luck with these as any of you might slip me off the bottom of the deck. What are you saying, mister? I was just wondering if that was how you managed to win Jamie Howard's mind from him. You accusing me of cheating? You've been dealing cards off the bottom ever since I sat down at this table. I'm not wearing a gun, Paladin. And if you are... Well, I'll be happy to leave mine right here on the table, Mr. Hargitay. Now. No! Oh, God, oh, God, you got him, Paladin. Here, <laughs> you got him good. Well, uh, Jamie, where'd you come from? I uh, didn't think I was going to miss the fun, did you? Well, uh, you were right about the game. It was crooked. Let me have that beer, will you? Yes. Yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> All right, Hoggerty, you want any more? Uh, no. No, I had enough. Where's the deed to Jamie's mine? My, my pocket. There you are, Jamie. While Hargerty had the deed, he was within his legal rights to have Sheriff Farrell run you off the claim. I'll see that he signs it back over to you. I'll take that paper, if you don't mind, Mr. Paladin. You what? Oh, yeah. 
Might as well give it to her. <laughs> What's this all about? Well, I say, well, uh, Paladin, I'll tell you now. Uh, You'll tell me what? Uh, uh, what he's trying to say, Mr. Paladin, I offered him 10,000 cash against his mine that you'd win the fight. That... And you bet against me? Well, Paladin, he, uh, that was an awful good bet. <laughs> and, oh, and look at the size of him laying there. Jamie. Huh? Well, now, don't you worry none about your money. Jamie. You'll get it. You'll get it just as soon as I find me another mine. Jamie. No, oh, I give up. <laughs> Oh. oh, yes. Who is it? Oh, is it Mr. Wong, Mr. Polito? Bring coffee. Ooh, oh, well, uh, uh, that's a pleasant thought. Uh, strong, mm. hot coffee good to wake you up in the morning, yes? Mm. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, Miss Wong, this coffee is strong and hot enough to wake up old Rip Van Winkle. Oh, hmm. friend of yours, Mr. Wrinkle, Mr. Paladin? Just an acquaintance, Miss Wong. Oh, hey, boy, say you get back late last night. Very late. Oh, hope trip very fortunate and lady luck right by your side. Miss Wong, the luck that rode by my side was far from being a lady. <laughs> Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the Be Sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Roth, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Gene Webster. Featured in the cast were Forrest Lewis, Barney Phillips, Virginia Christine, and Jack Moyles. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.